when people ask, you're uh, designing and manufacturing and selling audio equipment. Yes, that's true. But what are we actually selling at the end of the day? From my point of view, we're selling emotions. Some do it well with hardcore music and others need easy listening. And for me, that's a mood thing. It depends on the day and the mood I'm in. Getting home from a stressful day, I have to sit in front of the system for at least an hour. Just relaxing, really. <laughs> I really got introduced to audio gear was through a friend. I went to visit him and his father had really nice gear. I was like, damn, I uh, sounded so fantastic, you know, and I didn't listen to my own system for at least some days after that because it was unbearable. Some years later, I purchased my first DIY kit where I had to build everything, you know, from a board level and up. Like so many others, I'm sure, it didn't work when I was done. So I was around 16 years old, and that's where I decided I need to learn how to figure this out. My father wanted to, to create his own products. The funny thing is that it was never intended to become a commercialized thing. It was a hobby that became a business. Hi, hello, readers. Welcome to Portugal. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're enjoying yourself. Absolutely. And, and you and your wife. Yeah. I was traveling around the world. I was promoting it. I was doing trade shows, talking to the bank, customers, distributors, subcontractors. I was doing all of that. And so I was getting more and more into the normal business side of things and less and less and less the engineering. And doing that for quite a few years just got to the point where this is not really why I started the company. I have quite a collection and far from all of it is, is here. More speakers, more turntables, are to us Lots of different things that is a part of my history one way or the other. I started this company based purely on the interest for music and the reproduction of music in your living room. Electronics and stereo equipment, for me it still is a tool because the main thing is, is actually the music at the end of the day. And this is our showroom. So this is where we really listen. I understand why many people are skeptical uh, about high-end audio uh, as a general. They use all the buzzwords. You know, it has more bass, it has more frequencies, it has a bigger range, sure. But like with the car, it has more horsepower, but how does it drive? What I like to say is that we don't sell hi-fi equipment, we sell an experience. What is good sound? It's, it's, a, it, it's a very interesting topic because it's impossible to agree on, I would say. That's um, kind of a, a loaded question, you could say, because it's, it's, it's like religion. For me personally, good sound is total lack of listening fatigue. I don't want my system dictating how long I can listen or how loud I can listen. In terms of, of getting to the sound that, that we're after, it's mainly for me about refinement of things that can make a huge difference. I always try to merge the sound of tubes and the higher frequencies with the control and dynamics from solid state in the lower frequencies. That was my, that was my starting point. That's what I wanted to do. And I've, from what the customers are telling us, that's exactly what, what we managed to do. Every time that we design something, we listen test it. Uh, and if the listen test doesn't go well, if we feel like something is missing or something is not uh, conveyed the way we want, uh, design changes have to be made. Many companies, they start with an idea of the end product and the end price and the whole marketing plan. 
Well, the way that we go about the whole R&D process is probably quite opposite of what most people do. Historically, it starts with me and a product that I thought would be really, really cool to have at home. Budget was never a part of it. It was always, what can we do differently than we did before? Or how can we tweak what we already have to get to the next level of performance? And then, you know, when the whole design was done, uh, we would do the math and we would sometimes go, oops. Okay. <laughs> Yep, so that's how it looks on the other side. When customers want to upgrade or when we have new ideas, they don't have to sell their current product and buy a brand new one. We can simply upgrade the modules on the inside. It's not so much you buy a product and then you use it and then you discard it. No, it's, uh, you know, it can be a lifetime investment because we keep uh, upgrading it. I love creating mechanical parts, doing crazy designs, slick designs as, as we do here. I really, really want to get back into just doing the R&D, you know, figuring out new technologies, building new stuff from scratch, designing new stuff from scratch without any boundaries. So I started talking to Alexander about potentially handing over their CEO role to him so he would be the, the person taking it into the future. And then all of a sudden, our longtime employee, uh, Lucas, he started to uh, express uh, an interest for maybe coming into the company as a part owner. And that kind of narrowed the timing for a potential generation change. Welcome to AVA Group AS in Denmark, the home of the brands Aluxity and Vitus Audio. Please come enjoy a tour of our production facilities with Alexander and I. If I could give myself good advice uh, when I started, choose the right tools, stick with them. Anything with, that has uh, parts repeating uh, over and over again, the room features, you know, it's a, it's a must use from, from my point of view. I'm primarily doing the schematic at this point, and then I hand the schematics over, and they are, they are dealing with everything else. I think this is actually the last uh, board that I uh, that I modified and laid out. You can see these regulators in here. These are almost identical, but they are done in rooms. And it's are... crucial to have the comments going back and forth within Altium instead of hanging that on emails. It's impossible to control, so we, of course, we use the tool for that. Integration with with uh, Altium 365 and maintaining the libraries there in one spot, one database was fantastic when that was introduced. I mean, libraries are the key thing, it's the foundation of any electronic design that, that we do. If the libraries are in a mess, well, garbage in, garbage out, as they say. I find it difficult to see myself using anything else at, at this point, I have to say. When I was younger, people say, well, can't be done. I, I would go as far as I could to prove them wrong. I think I, at this point, accomplished more than I would ever have dreamt about. Engineering is pushing uh, the boundary of what's possible. You're never satisfied. You're always curious. You always want to push to the next level. What's next for me? Crazy, crazy things, absolutely. Thank you for watching Altium Stories. If you found this story inspiring, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends and colleagues. By subscribing and hitting the bell icon, you'll never miss out on the latest engineering stories from our channel. We would love to hear your thoughts, so please comment and let us know your favorite engineering story. Thank you for supporting us and helping us continue to share the impactful work being done by engineers around the world.